Hey, I know that the title might have misled you, but this video is going to discuss violence. And if that's something you're not comfortable talking about or seeing on your screen, maybe this video, which is about that, probably not the right one for you, seems obvious. But I want you to have fun and watch some videos, too. So if you, if you know, just thought it was worth saying. All right. Have have a great time. Enjoy the rest of the video. Bye. Hello, Scaredy Cats, it's me, Scaredy Matt. Violence, that stuff's pretty fucked up. Nobody likes to, nobody likes that junk, violence. It's, but is it okay to enjoy violence in horror movies? Pretty big question. And depending on how you answer it, it can have some pretty far-reaching implications. Do we allow anything in a movie, no matter how v depraved and gratuitous it is, and just live with the consequences of that decision? Or do we try to find some sort of reasonable limit and therefore start to silence people and suppress art that makes us uncomfortable or disturbed? Personally, I know which direction I lean in. I don't believe in censorship of artistic expression. I think more often than not, attempts to place limits on how disturbing artwork is allowed to be come hand in hand with oppressive social attitudes. If we start to set boundaries on self-expression, it leads to people using those boundaries to marginalize people. Historically, attempts to limit sex in art ended up creating legislation or cultural attitudes that disproportionately censor LGBTQ plus people and women. From the Hayes Code, to the Comics Code Authority, to the MPAA, to the ESRB, all of these bodies treat heteronormative sex as less disturbing, less meriting of censorship than other types of sexual activity. All of them treat sexual activity of any kind as more meriting of censorship than violence catering to sex-negative prejudices. The Marvel movies are never going to show you a boob, because, heaven forbid, a child be exposed to the sight of a woman's body, which is, of course, inherently sexual. That will lead them down the dark road of temptation towards having sex as adults. Which is bad. But they can show them this! But, while I find calls for censorship misguided, I'm also not entirely convinced by the idea that fictional violence has no effect on people. I think violence in movies, TV, comic books, video games, etc. is a real problem. I think it can have a pernicious effect on the psyche of the people watching it. It normalizes violence and desensitizes people to real-life brutality. And there's no doubt that horror can sometimes be gratuitously violent. Sometimes excessively, hideously violent. Even so, I think this is less of a problem for the horror genre than it is for the film industry writ large. Now, don't get me wrong, horror has more violence than most other genres, probably the most of any genre, but that violence is framed in a specific way. It's clear in a horror movie that violence is something to be feared, something that makes people suffer, something that everyone wants to avoid. Victims of violence will run, scream, cry, beg for their lives. People who inflict violence are shown as hideous monsters, sometimes literally, sometimes figuratively, sometimes they're very good looking. Oftentimes, the only people we get to know in a horror movie are people we expect to be doomed to face horrific violence. Everything about them is framed from the beginning of the movie as the precursor to their deaths. Everything they do, every decision they make, brings them one step closer to their inevitable gruesome demise. The tension becomes hoping against hope that these people will avoid their fate. But no, even if a cool guy tells them that this camp has a death curse, these kids are still gonna go and stay there and get totally murderfied. Good to camp blood, ain't ya? God damn it, Ralph, get out of here. Go on, get. Leave people alone. You'll never come back again. It's got a death curse. Now, some movies make the characters intentionally unlikable so that audiences will enjoy seeing them die. Looking at you, 
every Final Destination movie after Part 2, every Friday the 13th movie after Part 7, and every single slasher that came out in the 90s post-Scream. But really, that's just softening the blow. The violence in movies like this is still framed as something you should not want to see. That's part of what makes it fun to see. It is understood in movies like this that violence is a bad thing, and thus, to enjoy it is an act of transgression, a subversion of the way that one would be expected to react to violence. This is why movie series can start off serious but progress into gallows humor as the franchise goes on. It gets harder and harder to genuinely care about these kids going to Camp Crystal Lake for the umpteenth time when every other group of kids that went up to that lake suddenly got mysteriously murderfied and nobody seems to go, hey, you know what? Let's not go to the lake. Let's not do that. I don't want to, I, well, I want to live. On the other hand, it'll always be funny to see Jason hit someone in a sleeping bag against a tree. And as these movies become more and more comedic, it becomes necessary to make the violence more over the top. Realistic violence is not funny. If you see someone get bonked in the head with a coconut, it's funny. If you saw the same person get bonked in the head with, like, a rock, that's, that's not as funny. The more you can relate to the violence, the more you can imagine yourself as the victim of the violence, the less funny it's gonna be. And horror does this better than most other genres. In almost any horror movie, the people you are meant to relate to, the people who are meant to represent the audience's point of view, are the people in danger of violence being done to them. Having the hero do all the violence isn't exactly scary. I don't care if the evil bong is coming to get you, if you got a shotgun and you're expertly trained at martial arts. Now imagine making a movie where the violence only ever happened to people who unquestionably deserved it. People who do terrible things that can only be stopped through brutal violence. Imagine the hero of the movie dispensing justice to the villain and everyone who got in the way, and imagine that violence was seen through the point of view of the person doing it rather than the people receiving it. Can you imagine that? Just kidding. You don't have to imagine it. That's every fucking action movie. It's all of them. In the mid-2000s, when movies like Hostel or Saw were being called torture porn, the movie Taken was released. It included this scene. Wake up! I need you to be focused. Ah! Are you focused yet? I don't know. Please! Uh, I don't know! I don't know! No! I believe it. <laughs> but it's not gonna save you. <laughs> Seen here is Liam Neeson torturing a swarthy foreigner. But it's okay, because the foreigner is kidnapping American women and selling them into sex slavery, and he just won't give up info. So really, anything you do to him is fine. Now mind you, I don't really care if terrible things happen to sex traffickers in real life, but this is a fictional character who was written to be a sex trafficker so that the audience wouldn't feel bad when Liam Neeson tortured him. And it's a little fucked up that this movie came out while the United States was under scrutiny for the actual torture it was doing on actual foreign people, which they justified because they were obviously so bad they were terrorists that anything we did to them was okay, right? Now in real life, that don't work. If you're trying to get info out of somebody and you torture them, they're not going to give you the info. They're just going to say whatever they think will make the torture stop. Now ask yourself, how many times you've seen this scenario play out in a movie? A bad guy has some crucial information and there's a ticking clock counting down until something terrible happens. I guess it's up to the hero, Mr. Tough Man, to get in there and torture him, even if those namby-pamby peaceniks think it's a bad idea because of his human rights. This trope is so pervasive that it affects legislation. Former Supreme Court buffoon and current skeleton Anton Scalia literally cited the TV series 24 in a hearing to determine whether or not torture was permissible. 
I now interrupt this episode of Scaredy Cats to bring you a direct quote from The Atlantic describing comments that Supreme Court Justice Anton Scalia made about the fictional television guy Jack Bauer. Jack Bauer saved Los Angeles. He saved hundreds of thousands of lives, Judge Scalia said. Then recalling season two, where the agent's rough interrogation tactics, uh, it's a little uh, fun euphemism for torture, saved California from a terrorist nuke. The Supreme Court judge etched a line in the sand. Are you going to convict Jack Bauer? Judge Scalia challenged his fellow judges. Say the criminal law is against him? You have a right to a jury trial? Is any jury going to convict Jack Bauer? I don't think so. Once again, that is a direct quote from a man who sat on the Supreme Court. I don't think you could come up with a more concrete example of media violence affecting people than a legislator literally citing fictional violence as the basis for their belief that actually violence is sometimes pretty cool. None of this is to say that you should feel bad for liking action movies, even action movies with shitty ideas. Lots of movies have shitty ideas. My point is that I don't think it's really helpful to just total up the number of violence points in a work of art and treat whichever work shows more violence on screen as the more harmful thing. You gotta look at more than that. How is the violence framed in context? What are the consequences, if any, of that violence? What is the movie saying about the use of violence? I don't think Evil Dead 2 is trying to convince people that it, it would be cool and good to grab a shotgun and blow people's heads off just because the movie has a fictional character do it in a cool way. Hey, I'll swallow your soul! I'll swallow your soul! I'll swallow your soul! <laughs> swallow this. The movie is a cartoon. None of the villains in the movie are remotely relatable because they're all demon zombie monster guys. Compare that to John Rambo, a movie where an American war hero has to gun down thousands of Burmese criminals because some pacifists got people kidnapped because they don't believe in violence enough. One of them shows cartoon violence as a response to a cartoon threat. One of them shows cartoon violence as a response to a real life threat, and also contrasts it with pacifism, which is for fools and wimps. Only muscly gun people can save the day. And I do think that John Rambo is trying to sell you on the idea that violent retribution is the only way to deal with human rights abuses in other countries. I think it's very obviously trying to say that. And that has the real effect of desensitizing people to what they perceive as retribution for crimes. While Evil Dead 2 might be more violent on paper, it's not presenting that violence as a thing you or anyone should or could do or approve of in real life. It's meant to make you go, oh, oh, oh cool, instead of like, fuck yeah, get him. Fucking get him. So is it okay to enjoy violence in horror movies? I guess it really depends on who the violence is being done to and why you're enjoying it. Like, if you're enjoying it because it's like, boy, I wish somebody would do that. Yeah, it's not great. Sounds kind of obvious when you put it that way. Thanks for watching my video. It, uh, did you, um, I don't know if you know this because a lot of people on YouTube won't talk about it, but there's a little button with a thumb up and if you press that, all of your wishes come true. And also, if you subscribe to me, maybe you'll win some money. I don't know how. It could happen. If you tell 10 people about this video, then you'll get good luck from a ghost. Go ghosts are magic. And they can cast spells. So. You're losing... You're losing money not telling people.